Welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. I'm Brother Vince. I'm an Army veteran. And today we're going to talk about the 2023 VA Survivor Pension Benefits Rates. But before we get into that, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You can find more content from Vet Talk on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Reddit for more content. To all veterans who would love to share your story or resource for veterans and non-veterans who would love to share your resource for veterans, please feel free to contact me ASAP so we can schedule the meeting. Now that we got that out the way, let's get into this topic. So what I'm about to do is I'm about to share my screen with all of you out there who may be needing some kind of assistance as far as reading or or just hearing somebody go over this information so that you can have a clear understanding of the veteran survivors pension benefit rates. Basically, I was asked in the group about the Congress limit as far as how much the limit was set to. I found out what that limit was, and I want to ensure that I'm giving you clear and precise information as far as when it comes to VA survivors pension. So let's learn about the VA survivor's pension benefit rates. If you qualify for this benefit as a surviving spouse or dependent, we'll base your payment on the amount of difference between your countable income and a limit that Congress set called the maximum annual pension rate, MAPR. So when I say MAPR, that's talking about the maximum annual pension rate. Your countable income is how much you earn including salary, investments, retirement payments, and any income you have from your dependents. Some expenses like non-reimbursable medical expenses, paid medical expenses not covered by your insurance provider may reduce your countable income. Your MAPR amount is the maximum amount of pension payable to a veteran, surviving spouse, or child. Your MAPR is based on how many dependents you have or whether you qualify for housebound or aid and attendance benefits. MAPRs are adjusted each year for cost of living increase. You can find your current MAPR amount using the table below. For the example that they give your qualified surviving spouse with one dependent, you also qualify for aid and attendant benefits. Your yearly income is $10,000. So your MAPR amount is $20,509. Your yearly income is $10,000. Your VA pension equals $10,509 for the year or $875 paid each month. So the way that they did this was they subtract the MAPR and they subtract it from the yearly amount which gave them this number down here, which is the $10,509. So that's how you would do the math to find out the amount of money that you would be receiving each month. What's the net worth limit to be eligible for surviving pension benefits? From December 1st, 2022 to November 30th, 2023, the net worth limit to be eligible for surviving pension benefits is $150,538. So if you make anything below $150,538, you will be eligible for receiving as a survivor, survivor pension benefits. On October 18, 2018, we changed the way we access the net worth to make the pension entitlement rule clear. Net worth, including your asset and annual income, When you apply for surviving pension benefits, you need to report all of your assets and income. Note, if your children's net worth is more than the limit, we don't consider them to be dependent when we determine your pension. Read our definition below. So these right here are the list of things that they're looking at when it comes to them calculating to figure out if you're entitled. Assets include the fair market value of all your real and personal property minus the amount of any mortgage you may have. Real property means any land building you may own. Your personal property assets includes any of these items. So it'll be investments like stocks and bonds, furniture and boats. Assets do not include your primary residency, the house where you live most of all the time, your car, basic house items like appliance that you would not take with you if you move to a new house. So these right here are the things that they aren't looking at. 
And then right here, if you click on it, they say read about how we define assets. You can find out more by clicking on this blue box, annual income. Annual income is the money earned in a year from a job or from retirement or annuity payments. It includes any of these salary, hourly pay, bonuses, commissions, overtime tips. We'll subtract certain expenses from your annual income when we assess net worth. We'll call these applicable deductible expenses. They include educational expenses, medical expenses you're not reimbursed for. Read more about how we define annual income. An example of net worth and eligibility. If you had 121,000 in assets and 14,000 in annual income, then your income would be 135,000. So all they did was they added your assets with your annual income. And then they said, this is less than the net worth of $150,538. So you will be eligible for pension benefits. So this is how you become eligible. You have to ensure that you're making less than $150,538. What's the three-year look back period for asset transfers? When we receive a pension claim, review the terms and conditions of any asset the survivor may have had transferred in the three years before filing the claim. If you transfer assets for a less than fair market value during the look back period, those assets would have pushed your network above the limit for a VA pension. You may be subject to a penalty pay period of up to five years. You won't be eligible for pension benefits during this time. No, the new policy took effect on October 18, 2018. If you filed your claim before that date, the look back period does not apply. A look back period never includes a date before October 18th, 2018. What's a penalty period? A penalty period is a length of time when the survivor is eligible for a pension benefit to be over the limit mentioned above. However, not every asset transferred is subject to this penalty. If we determine you're subject to a pension penalty, we wouldn't pay pension benefits during the penalty period. Find out your maximum annual pension rating also known as, we said it earlier, MAPR amount. Date of the cost of living increase. So this happened on December the 1st, 2020. Increase factor, 8.7%. Standard medical deduction. Actual amount will be determined by SSA based on individual income. So that's the Social Security Administration. For qualified surviving spouses with at least one dependent, if you have one dependent child and you do not qualify for a house bound or aid in attendant benefits, your MAP amount in U.S. dollar is $1,478. If you have one dependent child and you qualify for a house bound benefit, your MAP amount is $16,462. If you have one dependent child and you qualify for aid in attendant benefits, your MAP amount is $20,509. If you have one dependent child and you qualify for eight intended benefits and you're the surviving spouse of a veteran who served in the Spanish-American War, your MAPR amount is $21,130. Note, the surviving benefit SBP minimal income ALT Limit is $10,757. If you have more than one child, add $2,743 to your MAPR amount for each additional child. If you have a child who works, you may exclude the wages up to $13,850. If you have medical expenses, you may deduct only the amount that's above 5% of your MAPR amount. $703 of your surviving spouse with one dependent. For qualified surviving spouse with no dependent, if you have no dependents and you do not qualify for house bond or aid in attendant benefits, your MAPR amount is $10,757. If you have no dependents and you qualify for house bond benefits, your MAPR 
PR amount is $13,147. If you have no dependents and you qualify for aid and attendant benefits, your MAPR amount is $17,192. If you have no dependents and you qualify for aid and attendant benefits, you're the surviving spouse of a veteran who served in the Spanish-American War, your MAPR amount is $17,888. Notes, the surviving benefit plan, SBP, minimum amount of annuity, MIW limitations is $10,757. If you have medical expenses, you may deduct only the amount that's above 5% of your MAPR amount, which is $537 for a surviving spouse with no dependents. For qualified surviving children, if you're a qualified child, your MAPR amount is $2,743. So right here, you can see they have past survivor's pension rate tables, and you can go through and click through and find out what all those rates are. Then they also have the full Title 38 regulation, which you can read all of those things right there if you have any questions about. They have all of this stuff right here listed down here below where you can go over and read over all the information and find out anything that you have any more questions about. So I hope that I have done my due diligence by helping you understand what the surviving pension benefits rates are as far as for 2023. And of course, as we can see that these rates change from year to year. So there are going to be rates that may, that's going to change for 2024. But I just want to make sure that you had the most updated information that has a lot to do with your situation now. So if you have any questions or any concerns, you can always find a VSO, which would be listed on, you know, your actual VA.gov website. You can also call somebody from DAV. You can also go to some, um, talk to someone at Wounded Warriors or any local organization that you may have where you're at. And as always, I always tell y'all, man, y'all click on the description box and you will find my email down in the description box below all the information that I take from the actual articles or content that I create. And I put it in there and I make sure I put my email in there. So if you have any further questions that you may want me to help you with, feel free to contact me at my email address and I'll get back to you as soon as possible with any answers that I may have. And if I don't have those answers, I will always direct you to someone who can help you because I want to make sure that you're getting taken care of and that you're receiving the help that you need. So as always, this has been another episode with your boy, brother Vince for Vet Talk. Vet Talk out.